This video is made for my dear friend Victor and anyone out there who's thinking about investing in stocks but isn't sure where to start, how to invest in stocks, what stocks to invest in, or when would be a good time to become a stock investor. Today, we're going to go over Stock Investing 101 to help you take that first step to becoming a stock investor. Now, what is a stock? According to Investopedia, a stock is a security that represents ownership of a fraction of a corporation or an entity which entitles the owner of the stock to a proportion of the corporation or entity's profits equal to how much stock the owner owns. Units of stock are called shares. Now, why buy a company stock? Why not just buy the company's products? Well, take Apple, for example. Apple Store offers up to $500 to trade in my iPhone 11 Pro that I bought last year for $999 or 50% of its original value, not accounting for taxes. Moreover, Apple offers up to $35 for an iPhone 6 I bought five years ago. Now compare that with shares of Apple, which is up 51.86% since last year and up over 488% over the last five years. Now let's take another example. A base model of the 2016 Tesla Model S MSRP at $71,260. The current Kelly's Blue Book trade-in value for a base model of the 2016 Model S that is in good condition is $35,000, a five-year depreciation of almost 51%. To the contrary, an investment of $71,260 into Tesla stocks made five years ago would be worth $990,770 today, a five-year appreciation of 1,390%. Ask yourself this question. Do you want to make Elon rich or do you want Elon to work 100 plus hours a week on a weekly basis and take two weeks off in five years to make you rich? In general, stocks of companies that are traded on U.S.-based exchanges appreciate over time, and accumulating a lot of stocks that appreciate over time can and will make you wealthy. In fact, the vast majority of wealth accumulated by the world's top 10 richest men and women, according to Forbes' real-time billionaires list, which includes Jeff Bezos of Amazon, Bernard Arnault and family of Louis Vuitton, Elon Musk of Tesla, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, Larry Ellison of Oracle, Larry Page and Sergey Brin of Google, Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway, and Francois Bittenberg Myers and family of L'Oreal are in stock ownership of their respective companies. So how do you invest in stocks? Well, the internet has made investing in stocks easier than ever. The process to sign up and get approved for trading may take as little as five minutes. Currently, there are many discount brokerages you can invest through. I invest through Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, Merrill, which is owned by Bank America, Charles Schwab, Interactive Brokers, Tiro Price, and signed up for Weibo this week to get a feel of its trading platform. In addition to the brokerages I mentioned, there are many other online brokerages that offer you the ability to invest in stocks, options, futures, forex, and or crypto through their platforms. Each brokerage that I invest through has its strengths and weaknesses, and this is how I would rank the brokerages that I invest through based on investment knowledge and trading experience. In my opinion, Robinhood's biggest strength is its simplicity of its user interfaces that allow a person with little or no investment knowledge to make trades on their phones or computers. On the other side of the spectrum, Interactive Brokers has some of the most robust tools that experienced investors and even hedge funds use to conduct technical analysis. However, there is a very steep learning curve and those tools are not going to be very helpful to a novice inventor. My opinion is that if I'm a novice inventor, I would start off trading on Robinhood due to its simplicity and experiment with other brokers after I gained some investment knowledge. 
I have included links to each brokerage I invest through in the description below together with sign up bonuses that you can receive if you sign up with the respective brokerages. Let me know in the comments below which brokerage you choose and whether you would like to see videos on my assessments of one or more brokerages that I use as well as the pros and cons of investing through the respective brokerages. So which stocks should a new investor purchase? There are around 6,000 publicly traded companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ Composite, including not, but not limited to Apple, AMC, AMD, Facebook, GameStop, Pfizer, and Tesla, just to name a few of the many companies that generate constant headlines. E-Machines, one of the first stocks I bought as a new investor when I had no knowledge of fundamental or technical analysis, ended up going to zero. And in hindsight, it's not a surprise since I was a child at the time who had no idea what I was doing and bought e-machines because I thought their computers were inexpensive and a lot of people bought them from Best Buy. I wish someone had told me about index fund investing while I was building up my investment knowledge. The three most renowned equity indices in the world are the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the Dow the Standard & Poor 500 Index, or the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ Composite, or the NASDAQ. The Dow, likely the most commonly quoted and one of the most commonly followed equity indices, is a price-weighted index consisting of 30 blue-chip bellwether companies such as Apple, Boeing, Goldman Sachs, Johnson & Johnson, Verizon, Walmart, and Walt Disney. The S&P 500 is a market capitalization weighted index of 500 of the largest companies listed on the U.S. stock exchanges. The NASDAQ is also a market capitalization weighted index of almost all of the companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Many investors use the NASDAQ to track the health of the technology related stocks due to the NASDAQ being heavily weighted towards companies in the technology sector. An exchange traded fund or an ETF is a type of security that tracks an index, such as an equity index like the Dow or the S&P 500. For example, the Spider Dow Jones in Industry Average ETF Trust, ticker symbol DIA or DIA, is an ETF that seeks to replicate the performance of the Dow. DIA, which has $30 billion under management, is up 13.47% year-to-date while paying an annual dividend yield of 1.6% and incurring a net expense of 0.16%. Next, the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol IVV, is an ETF that seeks to replicate the performance of the S&P 500. IVV, which has $286.99 billion under management, is up 15.9% year-to-date while paying an annual dividend yield of 1.31% and incurring a net expense of 0.03%. Next, the Invesco QQQ Trust, ticker symbol QQQ, is an ETF that seeks to replicate the performance of the NASDAQ 100 which comprises the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. QQQ, which has $174.5 billion under management, is up 14.54% year-to-date, while paying an annual dividend yield of 0.49% and incurring a net expense of 0.2%. I have only gone over three of many ETFs that track the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. For example, the Spider S&P 500 ETF Trust, ticker symbol SPY, is an even more heavily invested ETF than IVV and incurs a 0.09% net expense, which is higher than the net expense of IVV, but also has more liquidity and is more popular with options traders. There are many advantages in investing in an ETF that tracks a major index fund, especially for a new investor. One, rather than selecting 
an individual stock which may go up or down for a myriad of reasons, some of which have nothing to do with corresponding company. A new investor can purchase, for example, IVV, which would be similar to the investor buying a share of the S&P 500 and holding portions of each component of the S&P 500, which includes Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, Visa, United Healthcare, Home Depot, Procter Gamble, and many more of the largest companies traded on US exchanges by market capitalization and based on their corresponding market weight. This would significantly reduce the risk of picking the wrong stock, like I did with e-machines and watching the stock price nosedive or go to zero. The second advantage is the little amount of research needed to select an ETF of a major index fund, which for a new investor who is only purchasing stocks is mostly on management fees of similar ETFs. A third advantage is that a new investor does not need to actively manage an ETF. The U.S. major equity indices such as the Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ have on average gained around 7-10% year over year, depending on the sampling period. So by investing in an ETF of an index fund, an investor can almost be assured that over a long period of time, the investment will grow and therefore simply apply an invest it and forget it approach. A fourth advantage is that most ETFs of equity indices provide accurate replications of corresponding indices, which is hard and tedious for a retail investor to replicate. And a fifth advantage is that investing in an ETF of a major equity index is likely going to net a better than average return for the investor. Some surveys say that up to 85 to 90% of investors lose money in the stock market. Even if only 50% of investors lose money in the stock market, that means that only 50% of investors break even or make money, some of which undoubtedly would make less than average market returns, which has been seven to 10% year over year. As a new investor who is still learning the basics of investing, buying one or more index funds would not only reduce risk, reduce stress, but also generate better than median returns. My friend Victor asked me whether now is a good time to start investing and how much he needs to get started. Depending on how you look at last year, we are in the 10th year of a historically long bull market cycle. Naturally, many stocks have inflated values. Further, 2021 has also seen many stocks that are or were on the doorsteps of bankruptcy shoot up a thousand plus percent due to investor demand, sometimes objectively unreasonable investor demands, which further fueled speculation that we are in a bubble. However, as I mentioned, stocks in general tend to go up over time and major indices tend to move up 7 to 10% year over year. So as long as an investor does not over leverage or invest an amount that the investor can't afford to lose or trade on margin, then buying an ETF of a major index fund is likely going to be a profitable trade over a long period of time. Listen, I am not a financial advisor and nothing I say in this video can be construed as financial advice. But if I could travel back in time and advise my younger self, I would tell myself to never invest an amount that I cannot afford to lose because while stocks in general trend up over time, stocks and even ETFs of major indices can be very volatile over short periods of time, like during February and March 2020, when major indices dipped over 30%. Regarding how much money is needed to start, Brokerages like Robinhood allow fractional share trading with minimum of $1. This means that a new investor can purchase as little as $1 worth of a stock or ETF per transaction, gain valuable first-hand trading experience before deciding whether to deposit additional funds 
to increase the investor's investment portfolio. For this Stock Investing 101 series, I am trading on a second Robinhood account in which I deposited $1,000 with the intention to deposit an additional $100 on a monthly basis to slowly build up my portfolio. My initial three trades are purchases of different dollar amounts of DIA, SPY, and QQQ ETFs, two of which will be illustrated in the following segments. Let me illustrate making a trade through Robinhood's desktop user interface. Here in the search bar, you're going to type in a ticker symbol for an asset that you wish to purchase. In my case, I'm going to type in SPY or the S&P 500 index fund, and I'm going to click on SPY here. It's going to bring me to another user interface that shows me the current value of SPY as well as its daily performance. On the right hand side, I get to select whether I wish to invest in dollars or shares. And this is pretty neat because if I have a specific number of shares of SPY I wish to purchase, and I can just type in the number of shares in the box below. Alternatively, if I wish to purchase a specific number of dollars worth of SPY, then I can just type in the number of dollars in the amount box here. And for this example, I'm just going to type in $500. And it's going to show me that the estimated quantity of SPY that I can purchase for $500 is about 1.152. And then I'm going to click on review order here, and it's going to bring it and give me an additional notice that saying for $500, I, I can purchase approximately 1.522 shares of SPY at the current market price of $433.99. If I wish to make edits, then I click on the edit button. Alternatively, if I wish to purchase SPY, I just click on the buy button like this, and voila, it is done. It is saying that I have purchased $1.152 one nine shares of SPY at the average price of $434.05. And then I can just click on done. I'm also going to illustrate how to make a purchase on Robinhood's mobile phone user interface. First, I click on the magnifying glass icon and it's going to take me to a new browse user interface. In the browse user interface, I'm going to click on the search companies bar. And then I'm going to type in the ticker symbol of the asset I wish to purchase. For this example, I'm going to type in QQQ or the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. And then I'm going to click on PowerShares QQQ. And it's going to bring me to a new user interface showing me the current price of QQQ as well as its daily performance. Now I'm going to click on the trade icon in the bottom right. And it's going to bring me additional choices, whether if I wish to buy stocks or trade options. For this illustration, I'm only going to buy stocks, so I'll click on buy. And then it's going to bring to me to a new user interface asking me whether if I wish to buy in dollars and the number of dollars I wish to purchase. If I wish to purchase a specific number of shares, then I just click on the dollar icon on the top right. And then I can choose to whether I want to buy in dollars or buy in shares. If I wish to buy in shares, then I click on buy in shares alternatively. And for this example, I'm going to want to buy in dollars. So I'll click buy in dollars and it's going to bring back to the user interface we saw earlier. And I'm going to type in $250 and then I'll click on review. And it'll tell me an order summary, and, and it's going to tell me that I'm going to buy $250 of QQQ at the market price, and I will receive approximately 0.694 shares. If I want to complete the purchase, then I just swipe up to submit. Alternatively, if I want to edit my purchase, then I click on the edit uh, icon on the bottom, uh, top left. For this illustration, I'm going to confirm by swiping up. And it's going to take a moment and voila, I'm going to get a new user interface showing me that the order has completed, that I invested $250 and then I purchased 0.694 shares at the average price of $360.11. And that's how you make a purchase on Robinhood's mobile phone user interface. I'm back on Robinhood's default desktop user interface. Stocks that I own are listed on the right in addition to one share of OPK, which was given to me as a reward when I joined Robinhood, I now own 1.15 shares of SPY, 0.694 shares of QQQ, 
and 0.719 shares of DIA, which I bought earlier for $500, $250, and $250 respectively. As you can see, the current values of SPY, QQQ, and DIA are $501.85, $250.75, and $250.87 respectively, which is expected given that the market rallied today. Holding ETFs of major index funds is a strategy that both new investors and even seasoned investors employ to accumulate wealth over time. Let me know in the comments below what your investment strategies are and what other introductory investment topics you would like to learn about. As always, thank you for watching and please hit the like and subscribe icons.